Wow. Lots of secrets in here. Many of you were inspired to write pirate stories, real adventures. I was inspired to grow a beard and moustache myself just to honour your pirate stories. And this one is called The Scroll of Secrets and it's by Fuchsia from Cheswardine Primary School and Nursery. Chapter One. It was 1659 and the sun shone brightly on the small island of Barbados. Everything seemed normal. Harry woke up at 6am ready for the busy day ahead of him. He peered out of his window and saw the same packed, busy roads with men and women of all ages running around like a herd of wild elephants. He popped into his work uniform and strode down the stairs to find a glass of coconut milk that he had collected the day before and a loaf of stale bread from the bakery waiting for him. Before eating, Harry reached over towards the fireplace and warmed up his hands. Then he grabbed a small silver locket from the ash-covered mantelpiece. His house smelled of dust, smoke and cinder. Through the cracks in the windows, he could hear the bustling street filled with people who would travel miles just to live in this tropical paradise. A black and brown cat hopped up onto Harry's lap. Good morning, Zelda, smiled Harry. The cat purred as Harry scratched the back of her ear. Happy birthday, shouted John, who was Harry's foster parent. He held up a long parcel wrapped in brown crinkly paper. Startled by the shout, Zelda jumped up and landed onto the table. I can't believe you're 18, said John, as he watched Harry unwrap the present. It's been 13 years since I took you in. Harry's mouth dropped. Oh my gosh, you got me a real fighting sword, exclaimed Harry. Thank you so much. The sword was long and sharp as a shark's tooth. The handle was gripped well. It included a leather case which was made from leather that had been shipped in from India and was covered with decorations of the ships in the docks. What are you going to do today, birthday boy? asked John. I'm just going to work, so I'll see you on the way back, replied Harry. Then I'll go and put flowers on Mum's grave and talk to her for a bit. OK, see you later, said John as Harry walked out of the door. As Harry left the house, he made his way to the docks where he cleans the decks of military ships. He could hear horses pulling carts as their hooves trotted. Harry continued his day just the way he'd said. Just before he went to sleep, he remembered his parents left him. A scroll to be opened when he was 18. Drifting to sleep, he wondered what was on this mysterious scroll. Chapter 2. 13 Years Previously on a cold, miserable Sunday evening, a small boy sat at the top of a cliff. A young, pale woman lay there next to him, barely breathing. Thunder could be heard in the distance. Please stay, Mama, sobbed the little boy. Waves crashed at the bottom of the cliff. Take this scroll, Harry, and only open it once you are 18. Remember, Harry, me and your father will always love you. Goodbye, Harry, whispered the woman. Tears ran down Harry's face as he cried. I love you, Mama. A blacksmith called John was on his daily walk when he spotted Harry lying next to his mother's still body and when he looked beyond the cliff he saw a storm approaching. He immediately knew that the poor woman had passed away and if he did not rescue the boy from the incoming storm, the lad would die too. John walked right up to the young boy and told him who he was and asked what had happened to his parents. My parents were pirates, answered Harry. My papa died in battle and now I'm all alone. The blacksmith's heart dropped. Why don't you come and live with me? I need the company, suggested John. Yes, please, sir. Thank you very much. That would be great. Thanked the boy as he wiped his tears away. Harry gave John a big hug. They walked into the distance talking about themselves. From that moment on, Harry knew life was going to be okay. Chapter 3 Harry finished his work the next day and went down to the beach. All was peaceful. The gentle breeze whispered sweet melodies into his ear. He stared into the sunset as he unrolled the scroll. The pleasant smell of bread came from the town square. Harry was eager to see what was so important that his parents wanted to tell him. The sea was calm and quiet. He slowly began to look down. Dear Harry, 
I am your father and there is some important news you need to know. Me and your mother were pirates, as you have always known. Way before I met your mother, I fell in love with two beautiful women, and after I and your mother got married, I found I, they had given birth to a child each. They are your siblings. There is your brother Jason and sister Maisie. You will all receive your own version of this scroll. Now here is your mother. I am your mother. Son, your job is to find your siblings and go to Mazia Island. All of your scrolls will reveal the way. There you will find the family treasure that me and your father have collected over the years. You need to split it equally amongst you three. Watch out for Captain Samuel Slaughter. He killed Papa and stole the key for treasure. You, Jason and Maisie and a strong crew of pirates need to get the key and avenge Papa's death. Love from Mama and Papa. Harry felt overwhelmed and nauseated. His heart beat fast like a steel drum, but he decided to make his parents proud, so he set off to find a pirate crew. Chapter 4 Harry walked in to the secret pirate bar on the small island by Barbados. Hostile eyes watched him. The room smelled of the sea and fish. As he slowly walked to the bar, he saw a men fighting over who was the strongest pirate. The bartender looked a lost soul. He had no facial expression and groaned when he poured the drinks. A drunk, clumsy man danced on the stage while everyone else laughed at him. Harry sat on a rickety chair by the bar and asked for a glass of whiskey. An old drunk man stumbled over to him. Hello, I'm Richard, mate. What's your name, laddie? he asked his breath smelling of alcohol. My name's Harry Morgan, replied Harry. The room became silent. Everyone turned round and stared at him. Was your father called Henry Morgan by any chance? questioned Richard. Everyone leant forward eagerly. Without thinking, Harry answered, Yes, and I am here to find a crew to avenge my father's death. Suddenly, a herd of pirates charged towards him, asking if they could be a part of the crew, because they all wanted to fight side by side with the son of the world's greatest pirate. Harry made them form an orderly line. He examined them one by one until he picked ten pirates, including Richard. Yet he still needed a captain. Then the door burst open, and a male pirate with a three-cornered hat strode into the bar and went towards Harry and said... I hear you need a captain. Him and Harry talked for hours about their plan. The captain was then a member of the crew and shall be called Captain Adam. What are we going to do for now? asked Dwayne, a member of the crew. Simple, chanted Harry and Captain Adam. We get a ship. Chapter 5 The next morning the crew made their way to the docks where the military keeps their ships. Seagulls flew hungrily around the ships and boats. The ships were made out of sturdy wood so they wouldn't break under cannon fire. Their flags danced in the wind. So let's go over the plan again, said Adam. They all gathered around a small table which was a small walk from where nobody could hear them. Harry laid down an old piece of paper with a drawing on it like a blueprint. Richard and I will make distractions for the guards while the rest of you sneak onto a ship and I'll meet you at the cliff top, exclaimed the captain. They all split up and set their plan into action. Richard got out his whiskey flask from his pocket and had a big gulp. Then he stumbled into the guards before slurring, Hello, fancy some bootleg rum, lads? Then Harry and the rest of them popped their heads up from behind a little brick wall, one by one. They slowly slipped past the distracted guards who were arguing with Richard. As they began to board the ship, Richard was being taken away by guards for possessing bootleg rum. Suddenly, Adam stood on the top of another ship and shouted, I hear I'm the most wanted pirate. Catch me if you can. Every guard chased after him like a stampede of bulls. Richard escaped and slipped onto the boat with the others and untied the boat to the docks. Adam ran as fast as he could. He ducked and dodged through the palm leaves like a game of dodgeball. Finally, he found himself on the cliff top and without thinking, he jumped down before the guards could catch him. Down, down, down he fell until he landed flat on his face in the boat with his crew. 
So where next? asked Adam as he staggered up from the floor. While you were running, I saw small writing hidden at the bottom of the page that said to meet my siblings tomorrow at Breaker's Island, replied Harry. OK, set sail to Breaker's Island, commanded the captain. Chapter 6 On their way to Breaker's Island, they faced rough seas with waves as tall as Big Ben and towering storm clouds. They passed the rocky canyons where shipwrecks live with many corpses. Everyone stayed, as the legend said was that if you went in, you never came out. Finally, they found the island. Land ahoy, shouted Darcy, the only female member of the crew who preferred to be called Dare. As they came slowly on the bay, everyone noticed two military ships, but they had pirate flags. Suddenly, around 20 people jumped out and split into two groups. One was led by a beautiful girl who had flowing brown hair that glowed in the sunlight, and the other by a handsome boy who wore fancy clothes that looked like they belonged to a world leader. Harry looked at them closely and saw that they were wearing a decorated locket identical to his. It's your father, Henry Morgan, the siblings chanted. They chatted to each other for hours, talking about themselves. There was his sister, Maisie, and brother, Jason. Together, they made a plan, but no one knew how to get to the island. When all of them had given up hope, they dropped their scrolls next to each other. The wind blew them over and revealed a three-part map to Mazia Island that was now complete. They stared in disbelief. How did we miss that, thought Maisie. Everyone got on board their ships. As they began to follow each other from the bay, Harry clutched the maps to his chest and whispered, Time to make you proud, Papa. Everything was peaceful. Harry led the way, followed by Maisie, then Jason. Until... Crash! Harry's ship was being attacked by the military. They began to panic. Harry told the captain to take his siblings back to the beach. As Adam, his siblings and their crews retreated, Harry saw his crew get arrested until he was arrested himself. How was he going to get out of this? Chapter 7. Harry and his crew were back in Barbados, but this time in a rotting jail. Richard and Duane whistled a tune. The jail bars began to rot and rust. Fungi grew on the walls. All of the nice smells from the beach had vanished. Footsteps came down the hallway. Thud, thud, thud. An army officer appeared and showed them a scroll. Capital letters all the way through. The scroll read... Today, the following people shall be hanged at sundown for stealing military equipment and being involved in piracy. These people are Harry, Darcy, Duane, Richard, Alfred, John, Ben, Edward, Daniel, Jack and Bart. Meanwhile, on the beach. I'm going to save Harry and the crew, declared Captain Adam. He felt proud for offering to go on such a daring task. I'll come with you, said Maisie. She was worried for her younger brother. You need to stay here while it's safe, replied Adam. But, but, she begged. But nothing. You are staying here and that's the end of it, shouted the captain. He had an important job from Harry to keep his siblings safe on the island. Adam set off on his journey back to his home of Barbados. Jason and Maisie sat down on the beach and once they finished plotting their journey to Maisie Island on the map, they turned around and their crews were no longer there. They weren't on the ships or on the beach. Together they looked out towards the big blue sea in fear, their backs against the rainforest, when suddenly they got pulled off into the jungle, while their scream made the birds fly away. What was going to happen to them? Chapter 8 Ten hanging ropes hung from a long wooden pole. Harry and his crew stood up behind each heap. The executioner wore a black cloth mask with two eye holes. His strong, muscular arms grabbed the hanging gear. Many townspeople gathered around to watch the execution. The army officer from before read out the scroll to the crowd as loud as he could. The pirates' heads were put into the hanging ropes. Everyone in the crowd leant forward eagerly. Suddenly, 
as the executioner pulled the hanging gear, which pulled the ropes so the criminal's necks would break. A sword was chucked into the air. It sliced through all ten ropes. Adam jumped onto the stage and handed Harry and the crew a sword each. Captain Adam saved the day. They all ran quickly down to the docks. As they thanked Adam, they managed to outrun the military and get onto the ship. When they returned, something didn't feel right to anyone. They couldn't find anyone, not Maisie or Jason or their crews. No one could find them. Everyone searched around for them, but they weren't there. They weren't on the beach or in the jungle. Harry gave up hope a day or so searching and they couldn't have left because the empty ships were still there. Suddenly, Dwayne came out of the jungle, shouting with fear, carrying a scroll, and he gave it to Harry. It read, Come to Mazia Island if you want to get your siblings back. From Captain Samuel Slaughter. Terror filled Harry's heart. Maisie and Jason had been taken by their father's arch nemesis. Everyone rushed to the ship, but they didn't know what Captain Samuel wanted with his siblings. Then he saw the map on the beach and picked it up. But then it hit him. Captain Samuel was searching for it when he took Maisie and Jason. Quickly they set sail and nothing was going to stop them. Then, there before them, the beautiful island of Maisia appeared. Chapter 9 As they got off the ship, they were surrounded by hostile pirates with blood-red eyes pointing their swords at them. Suddenly, a tall captain with a three-pointed hat came out from the crowd. Two other pirates followed with them, holding Maisie and Jason at gunpoint. Fear came over Harry's face. Maisie and Jason felt relieved that their brother had come to rescue them. Hello, Mr Morgan. Nice to see you could join us. I am Captain Samuel Slaughter, the greatest pirate who ever lived, he boasted. Our father was a better man than you would ever be, argued Jason. Captain Samuel pushed him to the floor. How dare you argue with me, replied Slaughter, and he pointed a gun at him. No, screamed Maisie as she pushed the guns out of the way. A fight had begun. Everyone charged at their enemy's crew, fighting hard. Harry's crew killed five of the captain's crew. Furiously, Maisie, Harry and Jason backed Captain Samuel into the jungle. Tell us what happened to our father, they demanded as they pointed their swords at him. Then all of Captain Samuel's crew was dead and everyone else gathered round. Your father stole all my treasure and all the treasure maps. So when I saw his ship one day, I killed him in cold blood, laughed Captain Samuel Slaughter. He charged at them, but they fought back and managed to slip his sword away. Then they killed him while whispering, This is for you, Dad. They took the gold key from his motionless body. Justice had finally been served. They followed the map through the jungle. Suddenly, they came across an X in the mud. Richard and Dwayne dug down deep until, ding, they hit something hard. A beautiful chest covered in jewels. Harry turned the key in the golden lock. Pop, it went as it opened. Inside were gems, gold, diamonds, silver, rubies and the treasure maps. The three siblings became famous pirates and went on many exciting journeys. But their stories are for another day. That story was Scroll of Secrets by Fuchsia from Cheswardine Primary School and Nursery. Well done, Fuchsia.